You have found a stairway. You see light above. Do you want to go up or stay on the same level? Haha, <laughs> in this one today, we're going to have some fun. Little history lesson. Telengard is a computer game developed by Daniel Lawrence in 1982. It was available on multiple platforms, including Apple, Atari, Commodore, PC-DOS, TRS-80. Daniel rewrote the PC-DOS version using C instead of BASIC, but unfortunately the source code was lost. He released the PC-DOS version for free on his website. Got a link in the description. Unfortunately, Mr. Lawrence passed away in 2010. Travis Baldry created an excellent remake of the Commodore 64 version for Microsoft Windows using the original Commodore 64 graphics and sounds. Travis released Telengard version 1.07 as freeware in 2005. Patrick Volpe, if I pronounced that right, made an awesome update of the original theme song using Commodore Amiga. Links are in the description. I downloaded the PC-DOS version and took a look at it, and I grew up with the Commodore 64 version, and I'm looking at this, and I'm going, I, I don't remember the sprites looking so detailed, and I certainly don't remember animations like this. But there's a problem with it. CGA graphic color palette, yuck. And there's not much sound in the game, but man, the sound that's in it, PC speaker sound just does not cut it. The Commodore 64 version, which is the version I grew up with, has a higher color palette than the PC-DOS version, and it's got better sound for what sound is there, but you compare the sprites, and the sprites in the Commodore 64 version are much lower quality, and there's very, very few sprite animations. So I'm thinking to myself, hmm, I wonder if I could combine the two. Enter Telengard RE. I recreated the PC DOS sprites using GIMP, and I added the animations into the Windows binary by reverse engineering and patching it using Cutter. So I ended up with the best of both worlds. I'm going to show you some before and after footage, and then we're going to dive into how I did this. Enjoy. This is going to be a quick time lapse of me recreating the graphics for the dragon in GIMP. I took screenshots from the PC DOS version of the game frame by frame to do this. So what I'm doing right now is I'm just copying out the dragon, dropping him into a new image file frame by frame. And the way I went with the colors for the characters in the game. I just Googled images for the characters and found images that I liked the best and picked colors out of those. Some of the creatures in the game, I had no idea what colors they would actually look like. So I just go through and color the dragon in each frame.
once I finish coloring the dragon, I'm going to make a new image with the same width and height dimensions. So when I scale the image down for the game, it will scale properly. And then the last step is to create the file for the animation. And there you have it. On the left are the original sprites from the Commodore 64 version of the game. And on the right are the sprites that I recreated with GIMP. So you can see on the Commodore 64 side on the left, very few sprites had animation. Where in Telengard RE, I've animated almost every sprite now. And they look much more detailed and much better than the ones on the left, I think. We won't spend too much time on the reverse engineering aspect of this, but I did want to show you how I was able to accomplish it. So I have the original Windows binary open in Cutter, and if you take a look at something that was already animated, like the gems, you can see these three instructions. And in me doing some testing, I discovered this is the number of frames and the width and height for the image and then this function is the one that actually calls the animation. So if I come up and say look at the dragon, you'll notice the dragon doesn't have those instructions. He just has his um, location to the image file and then a function to just display the static image. So we'll hop over to the Telengard RE binary that I patched. If you look at the dragon now, you'll notice in the pseudocode that you see frames and width and height. And the way I was able to accomplish this was I found a section in the binary that was unused, which is called a code cave. So what I do is I jump down to which was an unused section, and then I can add lines, and then I can have it jump back up and continue and change the function call to call the animation. So basically that was a rinse and re repeat process for all of the sprites in the game. I'm going to leave you with a clip of before and after gameplay footage. So I hope you enjoy it and I want to thank you for watching.